that I have a declaration to make. And I've only run this by a few people, but I think everyone else will be cool with it. We as New Life Church are no longer looking for volunteers. Because the word volunteer basically just means do it for free. You know? Volunteer has a, a financial aspect tied to it, a dollar value, and that value is zero. Do it for free. What we want is people that are willing to serve, are willing to obey God with the, with the right heart, obey God out of blessing, and impact lives. Because once earth passes away and all the money goes with it, your service will have eternal value in the lives of people. Volunteering passes away with the earth, but service stretches out its arm into eternity, which is something that volunteering doesn't do. So we are not looking for volunteers anymore. We're looking for those that are willing to serve their Lord, that are looking for opportunity to please God. And there is opportunity. There is plenty of opportunity. Serving impacts farther than that. And I want to point some people out. And I hope it's okay. Talk to me later if you don't like it. (laughs) (laughs) There's a, never mind. Okay. (laughs) So I I just want to say, I went to G47 uh, a couple weeks back. And there's this little girl there that she, she is the cutest thing ever, okay? Anytime Laurel prays, you bet that she's up next, okay? If Laurel has a word for somebody in a vision, you know within five minutes, this little girl, she's, she's drummed up something and she's gonna, she's gonna blurt it out, right, to somebody else. Because of that service, there is an eternity that has been impacted in this little girl. You get out and you serve and you see this stuff, you're like, wow, God, you're doing great, great things. Kids are, are, are just coming to Jesus authentically through service. That doesn't come from volunteering. I want to you feed the hungry. Betty with Operation Feast, you guys, it's countless. It's become countless the amount of lives that have been impacted through that act of serving, feeding the hungry, right? And, and, and it's just incredible. When they come in and they got the drivers and they visit, you just can't put a price tag on that stuff. You know, I point out Lorraine. Lorraine is notorious for having the longest delivery routes ever. <laughs> you know why? Because she stops and she sits and she gives her ears to those that are needing it and she listens and she stops and she prays and she pours into them that is serving that's not volunteering that has an eternal value there will be people in heaven that wouldn't be there without these acts of serving coming out of the lives of those that are here I got another one for you Inga is 91 years young, okay? She has started a ministry ministering to those who have been widowed. If Inga isn't done, you're not done. (laughs) If she can do it, if she can keep trucking, none of us have any excuses. Reaching into the deepest and darkest places and spaces of somebody's life, Sam Kenna, he was walking around the ministry fair and he went and went to the youth booth. He noticed that there wasn't any signatures and he reflected, he remembered when I was in youth ministry with Kristen and we first started. And we had two people helping us and how great that was for us and how it bolstered us and helped us to, to do ministry well. He saw an opportunity, he signed up and he's been going every week and doing a fantastic job. That is the serving. The tech team. Everybody on the tech team and the worship team who serve you the presence of God, who deliver it to Pakistan and all the other places. I don't know where else we broadcast or viewed. I just know it, at least Pakistan. And so (laughs) it's a service of delivering the gospel. It was good work. Everyone in that room saw an opportunity to do good work and initiated to be a blessing because they were blessed. 
Grandma Tanisha literally moved here from Abbotsford to serve at New Life Church, to serve in the, in the youth group. And they're doing a far better job than I ever did. They are impacting lives, and that's service. Service stretches into eternity. Your servanthood is valuable. You want to leave something behind? You can't do it without serving, yep. right? You want to have impact into eternity? Because we're going to have parties in heaven, and we're going to talk about who's there because of who. Like network marketing, you know? <laughs> But man, is it going to be a blessing? And is it going to be some good days? You'll find out. You may never know until you get to heaven. Hey, you know why? You did this. I don't know what. You did this. And you fed me and you listened to me. And I accepted Christ. And, uh, and then I, I'm here. It was because of you. It came through you. Wow, what a blessing. I know this guy. Uh, in Thailand, his name is Song. This is just to show that God doesn't need your work. He just wants your heart. He wants you to please him. This guy named Peace Song, we went there on a mission trip. He wants you to please him. This guy named Peace Song, guy lost his entire family in, the, in the, um, the tsunami that came. Everybody's gone. He was the worship pastor at the church where we were, and he stood out to me because he was so joyous all the time. But we learned his history. I didn't know how he could be joyous. After he lost his family, he was driving around listening to the radio. Guy only speaks Thai on the radio, an English worship station comes on, and he stops, he's like, whoa, this music has something to it. And he's listening, he doesn't understand anything. But it was filling him, he says, I just had these feelings when I was listening to it. I just couldn't stop. Every time he got into the car, he was putting this music on, until eventually he said, this can only come from God. If there's a God, this can only come from him. Without the help of a single soul, guy accepts Jesus in his car, listening to Christian music, and then gets plugged into a church, and is now the worship pastor at that church. God doesn't need you, but God wants you. God doesn't need your work, but he wants your heart in, in it. You are always ready to please God. John 14, 12 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do uh, the works that I do. There's that faith works thing again. And greater works than these will he do, because I'm going to the Father. You read this verse, you're like, how am I ever going to do more than Christ? You don't. All of us serving can do more than one person could, even if that person was Jesus. All the billion of us Christians around the world can do more than we did, but you do that through serving. Great command, great commission, make disciples serve. Serving. Galatians 6, 9, this is the last verse that I have. And let us not grow weary of doing good, but in due season we will reap. That is a promise. You will. Your work has God behind it. It's not going to go nowhere, right? It's going to get somewhere. It's going to reach places. You will reap if you don't give up. If you make it to 91 and you're still starting ministries. So then, we have opportunity. As we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. As we have opportunity, let us serve, and especially to those, to the house of faith. As we're getting into worship, I know I'm way over. It's okay. It's so red, I don't see it anymore. <laughs> if you have been blessed, I'm, we're going to do a little thing. If you've been blessed by the worship team here or the Operation Feast, a youth ministry, a children's ministry, a women's ministry, a community group, think about that and stand up. a men's Bible study, anything coming out from the service of someone else, this means that you have been poured into and serving is your calling. And maybe it's an Isaiah calling, but that's great. Isaiah is one of the greatest prophets of the Bible. It's time for you to pour out and serve as well.